Geometers, how are we doing today? We're in section 3.3 .3 now, and what we're going to try to do now is instead of using facts about parallel lines to prove things about angles, we're going to use angles to prove that lines are parallel. All right, the goal in this video is going to be for you to use postulates and theorems about angles formed by two lines cut by a transversal in order to prove that the lines are parallel to one another. In other words, we're going to use what we understand about corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive interior angles in order to determine whether or not two lines are parallel and to prove that they are if they are. All right, that's the goal for this lesson. Lots to go through right here, all very simple in concept though. All right, let's go to the next example here. And what I've done is I've given you a picture where I want us to determine are these two lines A and B parallel. Now I haven't told you anything about how to determine that, but what I'd like you to do is see if you can find any corresponding angles or alternate interior angles or that kind of thing that have the relationship that they ought to have if the lines were parallel to one another. And if they do have that, we'll say that they are parallel and we'll explain why. Look it over for a couple of moments. All right, now I want you to see the lines and the transversal that we're comparing really quickly. This is important for you to be able to pick out. We're determining whether A is parallel to B, correct? And the only line that intersects both of them is T, so that's the transversal that we're going to look at. And then what I want you to notice is that we can compare the corresponding angle measures formed by those two lines in that transversal. Now you see the 127 degree angle that line B and line T form with one another, and it turns out that that's what line A and T form together as well, because this 87 plus 40 degrees is that total angle, and it's also equal to 127 degrees. So our conclusion about whether the two lines are parallel would be yes, And the reason we could say that the lines are parallel is that their corresponding angles are congruent to one another. All right, see how that works? Let's summarize really quickly the ways that we're going to be able to prove that two lines are parallel using the various types of angle pairs that we've learned in this chapter so far. All right, you should copy all this down and fill in the blanks. And in particular, I want you to tell me what would have to be true about corresponding angles in order for lines to be parallel, or what would have to be true about alternate exterior angles for lines to be parallel. Take a moment and fill that in, please. All right, well, if two lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles formed with a transversal are congruent. So, if you can prove that the corresponding angles are congruent, then you can prove that two lines are parallel, just as we did in the previous example. Also, the same is true for alternate interior angles. If you can prove that alternate interior angles formed by two lines in a transversal are congruent, then those two lines have to be parallel. Now remember, the consecutive interior angles are supposed to be supplementary, and that's the answer there show that the consecutive angles are supplementary and you've proven two lines are parallel to one another and proves that the alternate exterior angles are congruent that also proves that two lines are parallel to one another these ideas are the key foundation to what it is we're doing in this section so make sure you know these and each of these facts that I just wrote corresponds with either a postulate or a theorem from section 3.3, .3, all right? And those theorems are all called converses, like corresponding angles converse, alternate interior angles converse and everything. I'll explain the word converse in class, but those are names that you need to be familiar with. All right, let's practice more with proving two lines are parallel. 
I've got several pictures here in which we're going to determine is line M parallel to line N in the picture. And if so, explain why, and we're going to use a theorem to justify why. Okay, so in this picture, is M parallel to N? Well, notice the information that's given to you. I'm telling you that these two angles are congruent to one another. And what kind of angle pair are those? Those are alternate exterior angles, right? And didn't we just say that if you can show that the alternate exterior angles formed are congruent, that you can show that the lines are parallel to one another? So the answer is going to be yes. And the reason that those lines are parallel is their alternate interior angles. Excuse me, alternate exterior angles are congruent. All right, I want you to try the next couple on your own. You're going to pause the video when you see the picture and then unpause when you're ready to get the explanation, the answer and the explanation. Go for it right here. Oh, well, the answer here is that M and N are not parallel, or at least that we cannot determine if they're parallel. We're just going to say no. Now, we only have to write down an explanation according to the directions I gave you if the lines are parallel, but I still want to explain to you why they're not parallel here. Let me highlight the angles or the lines that form these two congruent angles that you see right here. Notice that it only took line N and R to make these two angles right here. And notice more importantly that none of, neither of these two angles that were shown are congruent have anything to do with line M. And so there's no way that those two angles could determine that line M is parallel to anything because they don't tell you anything about line M. These vertical angles would have been congruent if line M and line S didn't exist whatsoever. Okay, you have to use alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding angles, or consecutive interior angles to show that two lines are parallel. All right, try this one. All right, well, I hope you said that the answer is yes, and we need to write down the explanation that I'm going to give to you here. Let me again highlight the lines that are formed by the angles that you see, or sorry, the lines that form the angles that you see. That 110 degree angle is formed by line M with line R. And that 70 degree angle is formed by line N with line R. Now can you tell that those two angles are consecutive interior angles of two lines cut by a transversal? And aren't they supplementary to one another? And when consecutive interior angles are supplementary, that means that they are formed by parallel lines. So yes, and the reason is... They're consecutive interior angles are supplementary. All right, you've got the basic idea. There's a little bit more for us to talk about. This next example is a little bit tougher. All right. I want you to determine which rays are parallel. Now, it's really tough here because I didn't give you all the information you need. Let me add some information that you need here. And there's only two sets of possible rays that can be parallel. It's possible that ray RT is parallel to ray SW. And it's possible that ray RV is parallel to ray SX. I'd like you to inspect the angle measures that they form with the transversal line AB and C which of those that you see are parallel to one another. And then we'll explain together why or why not the rays are parallel. All right, you've had a chance to think this over. Now let's talk about which ones are parallel. Let's first look and see if ray RT is parallel to ray SW. We want to compare the angles that they form with this transversal right here. And the angles that they form would be these that I'm about to highlight that 65 degree angle and that 60 degree angle. Now it's a little incorrect to say that those are congruent to one another, right? Because 65 degrees is not 60 degrees. So what I just showed you is that the corresponding angles formed 
by those two rays are not congruent to one another, so ray RT is not parallel to ray SW. Okay, so let's backtrack and let's compare the other two pairs of rays, which would be ray RV and ray SX. And again, let's look at the angles that they form with the transversal. Well, you're going to see that you have to add angle ART and angle TRV to make angle ARV. Let's see what that gives us. 65 plus 45 is 110 degrees, right? And I want to compare that with angle RSX. And 60 plus 50 is 110 degrees as well. Do you see how the corresponding angles formed by rays RV and SX are congruent to one another? Which means that those rays are parallel to one another. So let's write our conclusion. We can say that ray RV is parallel to ray SX because their corresponding angles are congruent. I'll go ahead and write that out, but you've seen that reason a couple times at this point. Alright, so there you have it. That's using angles formed by two lines in a transversal to prove that two lines are parallel. There is, however, one more concept that I want to talk about within this presentation. Because there's one more way to prove that two lines are parallel that we're going to learn about in this section. And this is using something that's very similar to a property that we've been using. It turns out that you can prove two lines are parallel to the same line, and that will prove that they are parallel to each other. All right, and I'll give you an example of that in a moment, but I want to tell you what this is called, this theorem that we're using. I'm describing to you the transitive property of parallel lines. And it works the way the transitive property of equality or congruent works. Basically, if A is parallel to B, and B is parallel to C, then A is parallel to C. I imagine that makes a lot of sense to you because you kind of understand the transitive property already. One last example in the video. We're going to explain why line X is parallel to line Y. All right, why are these two parallel to one another? Well, if we're comparing them, we don't have any angles that this transversal forms with line X and line Y. We've got the transversal M forms angles with X and Z. The transversal N forms congruent angles with Z and Y, but neither transversal forms an, a pair of congruent angles, obviously, with X and Y, or at least it doesn't seem obvious that they do. So we're going to have to come up with a certain way to prove that those two lines are parallel to one another. Well, here's what we're going to do. We can say that X is parallel to Z because their corresponding angles are congruent, right? Let's write that. And similarly, we can say that Y is parallel to Z because their alternate interior angles formed are congruent. And since X is parallel to Z and Z is parallel to Y, that's going to mean that X is parallel to Y. Because of the transitive property of parallel lines. All right, so there you go. That's how you prove that two lines are parallel. We still need in this lesson to begin to talk about, in this section, not in this lesson, to begin to talk about how you prove things in paragraph form as opposed to two-column form. That's the next video. See you in class.